faster than a speeding bullet. I ran until my muscles burned and my veins pumped battery acid. More powerful than a locomotive. An idea is like a virus. Resilient. Highly contagious. Able to leap tall buildings with a single bound. Hey, 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 guys, Jared Moon here, and welcome to the Better Humanology Podcast, a podcast aimed at one thing, and that is making you a better version of yourself, a better human being, and we do that in a lot of different ways. But before we talk about that, before we hop into what we're going to be talking about today, I just want to say if you enjoy the show, head over to iTunes and leave us a five-star review and a positive comment. Really helps the show out, helps me secure guests like Don Fletcher, who we'll be talking to today. So if you could do that, I would be forever grateful. And also one more thing. And not too far from now, I have a book coming out. The book is called The Garage Gym Athlete. And you're going to want to check it out. You're going to want to get a free copy. So if you're interested in doing that, just enter in garagegymathlete.com into your browser, uh, sign up there, and you'll actually be getting a free copy of the book Uh, once we release it here in about a little over a month or so. So just wanted to throw those things out there. But today, we have a really awesome show, a really awesome guest. We have Dawn Fletcher from Mentality Wad, which is mentalitywad.com. She is the owner and operator of that website. She has amazing content. She is very passionate about what she does. And, And if you know me at all, you know that I love working out. I love strength training. I love conditioning, running, jumping, whatever it is. You know, I'm all about it. But what intrigues me way more is the mental side of things. And Dawn is on the same same level. She wants to know that stuff and she's actually dedicated her entire website to it. And she has amazing tips that she's going to give us today. We we talk about everything in this this interview today. We talk about Harnessing your emotions, you know, to use them to your benefit as opposed to just running from them. Uh, We also talk about what to do in the high pressure situations and how to manage yourself under stress. We really cover it all. And like I said, this is a huge passion topic for me, uh, even more so for Dawn. And you're going to be able to hear that just with how much passion and fire she talks about uh, this topic. So be sure to check out her site. Uh, But have a good time and listen to this interview and take notes. She gives some really good stuff. And so I'm really, really excited for you guys to listen. I know I love doing the interview. So without any further ado, let's have Don Fletcher on the podcast. All right, Don, welcome to the show. I'm super glad to have you today. Thank you for having me on, Jared. Yeah, you know, I've been, I've actually been following your website for a long time. I've really been interested into just kind of the mental side of things of training and, and everything like that. So uh, your website has always been ins- inspirational and I don't know, you just really help, you know, with that mental edge. So super glad to have you here today. But before we hop into all of that stuff today and, and we get into the interview, can you just give me and my listeners, a, you know, kind of a background of who you are, where you come from and what you do? Of course. Um, so, I currently run the website mentalitywad.com where I post information, um, a lot of free tips on there, as well as programs, remote coaching options, and an ebook to help people reach their sport performance goals, fitness goals, and even their life goals. And it's all around the, the mental aspect. So, everything that it takes to develop the type of mindset that's going to help you reach your goals instead of keep you from reaching them. And so that's what I currently do. And I got to this place because of my passion, just basically combining my passion for for fitness and sport performance with my passion for psychology and understanding why we do what we do. And so I combined those those passions and basically built the past 10 years of my coaching around trying to understand how to help people on the physical aspect and strength and conditioning and also help them on the mental aspect with developing the proper mindset. You know, and I think that's awesome because I, if, if you, if you are in tune to the strength and conditioning world enough, you're going to find a good program and the program is going to work. But what's a lot more challenging is, you know, the mental side of things. Um, and I think that's awesome that you, you take an all encompassing approach. Um, and so one of the first things that I kind of want to hit on is, 
you know, something that you talk about on your website I've seen is how you can learn, you know, the thoughts that are holding you back and how you can change them. Yeah. Um, so what are your, how do you, how do you identify that? What's holding you back? And what are these thoughts that uh, you may be referencing there? Well, the first thing is to just build some awareness, right? And we do that by educating ourselves, whether that's reading blogs about mindset or psychology or listening to podcasts of people talking about these topics. Um, from there, after we build some just baseline understanding, we can just become a little bit more introspective by writing about or talking about our thoughts and our attitudes with others and beginning to learn, you know, exactly like, what does that mean? You know, what thought patterns are, are maybe holding me back or which ones could I improve upon? Um, so the, you know, the suggestion that I have is start reading, <laughs> hop on mentalitywad.com and, and start to learn and understand what exactly I'm talking about and, and where you could improve. And it starts by educating yourself and being willing to, um, put yourself out there a little bit to learn, to learn about yourself. And you mentioned writing. Do you think, do you recommend that uh, your clients or athletes out there do like a journaling practice? Absolutely. It's kind of cool. I just finished, um, creating over 85 journal prompts for athletes. I'm going to put it on the website next week, but, um, that's something I recommend to everybody that I work with. And some people may be uncomfortable with that at first, but even if you just think through what your answers would be or jot down some bullet points, really incredibly helpful practice to stay in tune with where you are and where you want to be. So it's something I recommend. Um, absolutely. Okay. That's awesome. I, you know, I've just recently, well, I'd say over the last year, I've been trying, trying to make journaling a part of my <laughs> daily routine. It really yeah. comes in waves where like either I'm really busy and I just forget, I haven't quite made it the habit that I want to yet. Uh, but I'm getting closer, and, and I can tell that it really just helps you kind of remain centered uh, a little better throughout my day, at least. And I, I'm very, very interested to see those those prompts that you're going to post oh, on your, your website. Oh, absolutely. I'll get a copy, yeah. Okay, great. Um, so, you know, one of my favorite things to talk about, because I worked with a lot of guys in um, Air Force Special Operations, and uh, before that I was in training with uh, y y pilot training in the Air Force, and yeah. keeping cool under pressure has always been just like this because I've seen some guys you know they didn't really train it that well or maybe they just had the natural ability to do it um, and then I've seen guys who just like absolutely lose it you know <laughs> and so yeah. it's always been a fascinating topic uh, to me so I want to ask you because this is kind of one of your expertise is what, what's the best way to remain cool you know under pressure or high high stress situations well I would say you got to find what works for you obviously and everybody is a little bit different, but just creating some dialogue and, and talking about that, like before you enter a high pressure situation is the key, you know, deciding beforehand, how am I, how do I want to respond to adversity? Who do I want to be in the face of challenge? You know, what's going to make me feel good at the end of the day with, with my effort. And so thinking about that is a little bit of mental prep before you go into one of those types of situations. And that's, that's a, a step that seems small, but people just don't do it. You know, they're so worried about other things or getting maybe physically prepared that they don't spend any time with that mental preparation piece. And, and that's the key to all success in my opinion. And do you think that that's like almost like a, maybe you're in competition or just about to hit a hard workout or some sort of event? Do you, is it kind of like, do you recommend routines or, or something like that yeah. beforehand to help people cope a little bit better or to get in that, in the zone, if you will? Absolutely. Routines, again, physically and also mentally, just thinking through, reminding yourself who you want to be, reminding yourself of the characteristic traits that you want to express. Um, so there's, you know, there's routine that's helpful, but again, not just physical prep, also mental prep routine. And that's something that, again, I'm big on and I recommend and I help athletes develop, especially people who are who are going to be in those high pressure situations, which, which isn't everyone, but most of us at some point will be there for our jobs or our, you know, our athletics or some at some time in our life we're going to be in those situations and it's best to be prepared before we get there. Yeah. And it's all about, you know, the perception of that individual. Some people that could yeah. be, yeah, presentation at work and some people that could be jumping out of an airplane, you know, whatever, right. whatever your job entails. I know... Like I said, when when I first started in uh, pilot training, I, I had my body had a very funny response to high level of stress. Mm. Uh, before a check ride, like right before a check ride, my body would basically want to like shut down and go to sleep. 
Oh man. I would get like, exa- like this would be like 15 minutes before I'd like get exhausted and I would just want to like be like, no, I'm, you know what? I think I want to go to sleep now. That's, that's the feeling I would get. Cause I think, you know, the stress would come on me so hard. Just it wasn't deplete you. Yeah. It wasn't until I kind of realized that, you know, this is something that I can control right. uh, to, to a point. It took a long time to try and, you know, move myself out of that. But actually that's why I asked you about the routines. Cause that's, that's ended up, uh, I didn't know it at the time. I didn't know like the psychology behind it or even what I was doing. I was just trying to create something that would, you know, keep my focus off, off of, uh, yeah. that for as long as I could before and I ended up kind of doing like a pre-ritual that helped me you know not get that feeling what did anymore. you what did you end up doing you know it's part of the pre-flight stuff is just the the walk around the airplane yeah. and all that and so I just got into before the walk around I had like just a check of all of my equipment yeah. uh, which is what guys do anyway but I made it very ritual and routine with a little bit of stretching involved too because you'll be like sitting that. in the airplane yeah. for a while uh, and that always just kind of grounded me and got me in the in the moment I like I said I wish I could say I was like being super strategic mentally and everything but really that was almost just out of necessity uh to keep (laughs) to survive the day but uh, you know it it ended up working really really well um but bringing it back that's cool yeah it can be something I'll go ahead something as simple as um focusing on your breathing or your body language that's two like really easy simple things that people could start to implement without really knowing anything but just taking you know a minute or two to tune into slowing down my breathing, taking deep breaths and, um, using my body language to help me again, whether that's rolling my shoulders back, um, loosening the tension in my face, maybe it's smiling, lifting my head up or my eyes up, you know, simple things like that, um, in a pressure situation are very helpful. And when we can become in tune with our, with our breath and our body language, those are two things we can control. And anytime we can give ourselves a sense of control in a stressful situation, we're, we're winning you know? And so that's just two really easy things to give people kind of a takeaway. You, you know, I've noticed that in, uh, I, I'd say mainly like tennis players. I, you know, I've noticed it in some like CrossFit games athletes, but yeah. you know, maybe it's a little bit different, but like, you know, tennis players picking their strings and yeah, all these little yeah. things. What do you think about stuff like that? Is that more in the moment type stuff? Uh, Cause that's another question I want to ask you is, you know, a mental strategy or tip you could share with like when you're kind of in in the the situation as opposed to kind of leading up to it. Yeah, and that's, you know, like the example you get you gave of maybe a tennis player plucking their strings, that's just something that that person maybe they find some that that brings them some sense of calm, some sense of control, some sense of like a familiar familiarity where they have done that a million times. So, sometimes it's a physical cue whether that's, you know, rubbing your fingers together, tapping your leg or touching your equipment. And sometimes it can just be a, a word or a mantra, just something that you tie back into as a reminder that everything's going to be okay. Um, again, I, I, I talk through those things with athletes and with clients and, and I encourage people to think through what might that be that's going to be helpful for me during the stressful situation. And it, it can either be a physical action or it could be like a mental cue. Okay. And so you said a, like a mantra. That, that's, yeah. uh, is that something that you recommend like everyone have like a, a set one? Yeah. Or even just a few different things, you know, uh, something that you could do would be write down five or 10, um, like slogans or words that help you. And when you become, you can become more aware of like, oh yeah, you know, whenever I say that to myself, it helps. Or whenever I think of that word, it helps. Or whenever I, repeat that quote over to myself that helps. So you come up with, you know, you, you want more than just one because sometimes that one doesn't work. So having a few, a few things that you acknowledge help you in a stressful time, um, it it is going to be a good practice because then when you get to that moment, you'll be able to draw from a couple of those different mantras. Yeah. And I like the, I like the fact that you said, you know, having multiple ones, because I know, say I'm just in a a really, really hard workout and I've kind of mentally prepared you know, there are some, sometimes I could say something to myself of course, and it's just like, nope, is, I don't care what like, you're this shit's what, not working. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And no, it just I know. Like, and that's why I say, you know, you can tell yourself like all you want, like, you know, I'm strong, I'm strong, I'm strong, but sometimes that's just not working, you know? Right. And so what are you going to do next? Are you going to stop and take a second to breathe? Are you going to, um, remind yourself it's almost over, tell yourself that you've done something harder, harder before, you know, what are what is going to be your next cue after that one isn't working? And so we need to have a, or it'd be best to have that, that kind of 
toolbox full of things that you can do in those types of situations. It sounds like, you know, a lot of getting good at the mental side of everything is kind of understanding yourself really well. Yes. Um, <laughs> That's 90% of it. Yeah. And so one of the things that you talk about is understanding your doubts, fears, and anxieties so you can, you can benefit from them. Um, you know, maybe we touched on this uh, kind of when we first started the, the interview, but what are some of the ways that you can, because, you know, some of the, like some fears are obvious, but, y you know, there might be some other things that aren't as obvious to people. So how do you recommend, especially maybe in, to athletes, how they find those, uh, identify them to use them for their benefit? Right. And, you know, that's a, it's a little bit of a process that happens again from getting to know yourself, but starting off by, you know, so many people, and we all do this, try to just push that fear or anxiety or doubt away. We want it to go away, right? We don't want to feel it. We don't want to experience it. And we want it to go away. But instead, you know, I recommend that we start to understand that, that these aren't bad. These aren't bad feelings. They can actually be incredibly helpful and we can use them to, to, um, to get better. Okay. So, you know, starting by understanding like, what am I fearful of or what do I not want to happen? You know, what's making me feel unsettled or some doubt and understanding whatever that is for that situation. And then saying, can I use this? You know, can I still go forward in spite of this? And the more we continue to take, take those steps forward, the less of a, um, like the less of a hold they'll have on us. It's not that they're going to go away. It just means that we're willing to take steps forward with those feelings like fear, doubt, anxiety. Okay. And I think, you know, I really like what you're, you're saying as far as don't just run from them, right. you know, learn how to harness and use them. So I actually heard a quote or not a quote, maybe someone was having a discussion about, uh, whether it's in a workout or a difficult situation, in your life bouncing from using emotion to get you through and using logic to get you through, oh, you, okay. you know, and like, I, I never really, you know, saw that, uh, I'm such a logical person, yeah. you know, just like, you know, analytical mind and everything. Yeah. So it was harder for me. But uh, when you say it, and I've heard it said other places, the fact that, you know, don't just run from those emotions, like learn how to harness them and use them. Yeah. I think yeah. that could be really beneficial. Is that another thing you think people can get through journaling? Yeah, through, again, journaling. Um, it would be really helpful to either talk it out or, or just go through it with a professional or with a coach who has some understanding and knowledge in that area because, you know, we all feel like a little crazy or we all feel like no one quite understands. But when you start to talk this stuff out with other people who have similar experience, you realize like we all have it and we're all the same. And it's it's actually a pretty beautiful thing to be able to share those experiences with others and encourage each other through those situations. And so, yes, journaling helps. Talking it out helps. Um, reading about this or listening to, you know, other speakers talk about it. Um, but the combination of all those things is best. And who do you, would you recommend like a, I mean, I'm not going to, you know, I, I know there are sports psychologists out there, mm -hmm. um, you know, right. who, who would you recommend working with like on something like this? I know you do that stuff as well, but is, you know, how, yeah, how do you find that person to help you through it? Or is it just a friend or training partner? Yeah. Starting with someone, starting with someone that you trust or someone that you look up to and whether that's a, a training partner in your gym or a coach, you know, if you're an athlete or somebody in your um, in your workplace, but someone that you trust and that you look up to, and maybe because you see in them that they're, you know, that they continue to fight through the face of challenge or that they stay calm under pressure, but whatever those attributes in that person that you look up to, they, they have developed them or they have them for a reason. And so beginning to learn about their story and share yours, you know, that would be a good place to start. Okay. And another point that you have on your website, which I absolutely love is because I've seen a lot of people who can't do this and um, it, it can cause failure or at least a lot of problems and that's not being able to quickly refocus or, or shift your attention you know uh, you know to what matters most so can you explain why why that's so important and maybe how to do it well what I'm talking about there is is mostly being able to bring your your uh, your focus and your attention to the present and so I've been saying recently that about 80% of our thoughts, we want to be on the now, right? Maybe 10% are reflective about the past and 10% are, and again, this is just 
hypothetical <laughs> percentages, but 10% about the past and maybe 10% about the future, but then bring, being able to bring your attention back to right now, what can I do? What can I influence? And what am I in control of that's going to set me up for the best possible future? So in an athletic situation, that's being able to quickly recognize when your thoughts are, you know, beating yourself up, up about what you should have done or what you could have done differently, or when you start to stress about what might happen in the future or what might not happen, you know, it's being able to quickly recognize that and then bringing yourself back to right now, what can I do? You know, this is, you know, kind of a tangent off of this point, you, you, cause you, you've mentioned kind of like your internal chatter, you know, a few times like your, your internal dialogue. Um, so I write some mental tips and strategy stuff at, at, at my website, uh, yeah. from time to time, but personally, um, like negative reinforcement works really well with me. Yeah. Um, and I, so I've written articles like that and people are like, man, like I basically, I can't take your advice cause I would just be beating myself up all day or whatever, you know, but for, some, yep. for some reason that works for me. Yeah. Uh, do you think I'm setting myself up for failure there? Or do you think people just operate differently or, or what? Yeah, no, absolutely. You're not setting yourself up for failure. You know, it's fine. It is about finding what works for you. What's, what has helped motivate you the most? What helps you continue to push? What helps you feel better at the end of a workout or at the end of a, of a day, you know? And once you can do that, yeah, it's about honing in on that and, and finding the best ways to continue to utilize that. So no, I think that's great. <laughs> I remember one time was one of my, one of my first CrossFit workouts and I was working out with my buddy and I told him, he was like, you can do it. You can do it being all positive. And I was like, Hey, I got to tell you, that doesn't work for me. I need you to be like, pick up that fucking bar and like yell at me. <laughs> and he just looked at me like so weird because he's such a nice guy. And I, I was like, can you do that? Like, can you do that for me? <laughs> so he was trying and it was just this funny situation, but we laughed about it because I'm the same way as you. Like I kind of, I like that more of that drill sergeant approach and someone to almost talk shit to me. And, and that helps me. That's awesome. That's good to hear. Yeah. Cause I, I have been getting quite a bit of feedback on that, you know, and I try to be mindful of everyone's course yeah but obviously i'm when i write or talk you know it's through my own lens and that's that's what helps me is just yeah kind of yeah. the you can be better get stop complaining stop whining yeah. you know that's that's what works for me so yeah that, that's cool that it, that it works for you as well but you know on the flip side of that there's um a, another part of that and that's being you know optimistic grateful and confident three things that you really uh you know you you emphasize um What's the importance of, of doing this? I know, and I mentioned earlier that I'm still trying to make it a habit to journal every day, but one of the things that I do is, you know, what I'm grateful for every day. Uh, how, how can these things help anyone, you know, if they add them to their daily routine or just in their mindset? I think that that practice of being grateful and just being um, being aware of, you know, the gifts that you have or... Uh, the abilities that you have and that practice of, of doing that is the, is the single handedly most powerful thing we can do for ourselves. And so just like you maybe practice doing that with journaling, or I would recommend anyone who has not done that for maybe a 30 day period of time to try it and just really watch how it shifts your mindset and how it carries over and starts to influence everything else in your day. Um, so that would be my recommendation because really we can only we can only believe something if we try it and it works for us, right? And right. so I obviously recommend it because it's that it's that it's that feeling of um just being really content and also really hopeful at the same time. So being content with where you are but also being hopeful that the future has something good in store, right? And that um, being hopeful about what's to come. That's a really, really po great positive feeling. And that helps you start to influence the world around you and others around you in a really positive way. You know, I've definitely seen that to be true. And I will say the only negative side to the constant negative reinforcement that I do use with myself <laughs> pre trying to be more optimistic and, and grateful was, you know, a, a tendency to, to lead down to the, the pessimism. Yeah. You and know. you have to watch out for that. Yeah. And as a, or as a pessim pessimist would say, you know, the realistic <laughs> yep. Yep. way, but yep. you know, uh, I have seen it. It has done a ton for me, you know, just a simple daily practice of, um, uh, being grateful and mindful, uh, which, you know, kind of 
makes me wonder, do you recommend people do, uh, you know, meditation or anything like that? Yeah, sometimes people are a little like eked out about that word, but really what that means to me and what I try to let people know is just taking time to be still and be be quiet with your thoughts. And that means eliminating all other distractions, you know, whether that's electronics or noise from your space and just taking the time each day. Um, and, you know, at the minimum of five minutes, but the longer that you can do that, the 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 better really but even just five or ten minutes here and there just taking the time each day to be quiet and still with your thoughts is is again another integral integral practice and it's something that i do and i highly recommend and that i think that people don't do enough of honestly no yeah i completely agree and i i often forget that it does that does kind of weird people out i know we did a meditation podcast a while back and yeah. i got an email from a, a listener who you know, told me that he wasn't Buddhist and not interested in listening right, to my right. meditation podcast. And I was like, well, you know, it's, yeah. I, it's not, you know, I'm not, it's not being tied to anything other than being mindful and, and present in the moment, you know? Uh, so yeah, that's, that's something I want to, little disclaimer I just throw out there for everyone. Uh, yeah. Sometimes it's like demystifying those words. You know, when I, when I talk about things like meditation or mindfulness, I always try to um, use other words or other language and explain them so that people are like, oh, yeah, like, I do that, or that sounds cool, instead of like, oh, that's just weird, or that's just a bunch of this, you know, whatever. <laughs> um, Californian <laughs> stuff, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I try to put it in like, hey, like, this, this sounds appealing, and that's actually something I might do, and and maybe that um, just calling it by different things will, will draw people in. <laughs> you know, and I'm sure you're familiar with uh, Mark Devine at, at yeah. Seal Fit, and he essentially, he, he's a big, uh, he, he's big into meditation, but you know what he has a lot of his, uh, athletes do or operators do is box breathing. Yep. And when I was down in San Diego with, uh, Mark doing one of his, his events, you know, we were doing box breathing I'm, and I was thinking being a former military guy, I, military people in my experience are much less likely to do something like meditation, right. especially yeah. if you call it meditation. Um, and like I said, that's just in my experience, but, uh, he calls it box breathing and it is a little bit different. It's controlled breathing, but I was just right. like, dude, you're a genius. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's like, call this <laughs> box breathing. Now we have every Navy like, SEAL doing it. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> That's awesome. And he, you know, he made it kind of cool and popular by just uh, putting a voice behind it and, and that's what we need. You know, that's what the culture of athletics and military needs more of is people willing to say like, Hey, this helps me. And this is what I've done. And this is how I've overcome and creating more dialogue around it. And then, you know, like he does have camps and have onsite programs where people can experience what does that mean? And what does that look like? I just think that's great. And that's, you know, that's what I'm trying to do in my small little world too. Yeah. And I think that what you're doing, what Mark's doing, all of that is, is amazing because I, I don't think that people take the take care of themselves mentally uh enough you know just right. and like, yeah because you could work out six times a day or whatever but uh, if you don't have the if you're not taking care of yourself mentally too then it's Absolutely. you know you're gonna run to the ground so another thing i wanted to cover uh because you know it kind of gets me excited is is just a principle you talk about is commit to the process so yeah. what do you, I, I mean maybe it sounds just too obvious but what does that mean to you because i i really just love the idea and, and the way it's worded there um so i think i saw this quote recently but i don't know if you've ever seen it and it's 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 something about um you can change change your strategy but never change your goal and you know that's about continuing to like adapt your plan or continue to find new ways to do things but always still you know, with the end goal in mind. And so really just that's the, you know, committing to the process is about focusing on the habits, focusing on the strategies, um, focusing on your daily routines and really putting the habits um, at the front of your mind. And, you know, the goal is still in mind, but your your focus isn't on the goal because that's the outcome and we can't control that anyways. But your focus is on what are the habits that I'm committing to? You know, what are the strategies that I'm willing to try? How can I continue to stay focused again more on the present and what I can influence and continue to to do that in a way that if I'm growing and if I'm learning, even if that means a lot of mistakes and a lot of losing, that if I'm growing and I'm, I'm learning, then that's a positive and that's a good thing and I'm getting better. 
And I love that. Just, you know, committing to the process exactly like you said with the daily routines and yeah, just it's focusing on the, I almost want to say smaller stuff, but it's leading to the bigger, the bigger goal, what you, what you were talking about. But, you know, I, I feel like most people don't even have a process or they don't have a, they're not doing it in increments or small, I don't know, steps that, that gets them where they want to go. And I, that's why I love that. When I saw that on your website, I was like, man, this is, this is awesome because I, I fully, fully agree with it. You know, it's people, what's the quote? People overestimate what they can do in a day and underestimate what they can do in a year. Yeah. Um, and so I think focusing on just small steps and chipping away at something for a long time is the best way to, to get there. Yeah, absolutely. And again, it takes it takes a little bit of thinking time or a little bit of journaling time, a little bit of a prepped period to kind of sketch out what does that look like? You know, what are the things that I can do daily and weekly in order to get to that monthly or yearly goal um, and strategizing a bit? But I think that's the fun stuff, you know, and, and if you get a crew with you as well to buy into your goals or to share your goals with, it's going to be far more meaningful. So how do you go about that? If you don't mind me asking your day daily routine, are you super organized everything on the calendar or do you just kind of have some habits? Uh, what, what does your day look like to commit committing to the process? So there's a few things that I do daily as far as routines again, that I know that help me, you know, things like morning quiet time, spending time outside, making sure that I have free time throughout my day. That's my goal is to create as much free time for myself as possible so that my calendar is not stacked. Um, and so those are the couple things I stick to daily as routines. But then on top of that, it's, um, it's again, always looking at where do I want to be and understanding that for me, um, you know, I want to have a lot of freedom so that I can choose to work with clients or help others or, you know, create a lot of, um, openness in my schedule and in my lifestyle so that I can, I can basically choose how I want to spend my time. In order to do that, I need to be really efficient with my time management. And like you said, I put about three things on my each day that I'm not, I want, I definitely am going to get this done. I want to get these three things done as priorities. And then anything on top of that is just bonus. That's awesome. You know? So making, making a few priorities for each day and then again, working to free up as much of my time as possible. Yeah, and you're kind of following the uh, the Tim Ferriss approach there. Uh, Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I didn't know if you if yeah, yeah, that was uh, maybe. Yeah, he's that, one of my influencers for sure. Oh yeah, yeah, that's awesome. I'm really yeah. awesome. Uh, and then another thing that comes to mind what you said is uh, Jocko Willenick. Have you heard of him yet? He's the uh, he he wrote the book uh, Extreme Ownership. We've talked about him a few times on the podcast here. But what came to mind when you were saying all that is his big quote, like he says all the time, is discipline equals freedom. Yeah. You know, and if you are maybe like say, maybe super disciplined to get things done, but that what that discipline does is gives you free time to do whatever you want. And, you know, that's something that, you know, you want to you want to use that free time to have more fun, live more life, you know, whatever it is that you want to do. So I, I really love that. It seems to be a, a common trait in all these high performers, yourself included. All right. right. And that, and I, I don't know if he talks about this at all, but I'm, I'm going to definitely check out that book. But, you know, I think we all, we all know that, you know, that, okay, we maybe want to create this certain life for ourselves. So there's going to be some things we have to do up front, but, but people continue to think about what am I setting myself up for in the future? And they put all those rewards in the future. And I try to encourage people and myself try to incorporate um, that discipline, but also that creating that freedom for now, you know, like what can I do? That's not all about just doing, doing, doing now to set myself up for some type of lifestyle in the future, but what can I do now to start to make changes or to, to improve my lifestyle right now? Um, yeah. so, you know, just in order to not get stuck on that, like, oh, I have to just grind and be disciplined and, you know, get in that headspace in order to hopefully create something better for the future that may never come. Um, that would be uh, not a good, not a good situation. <laughs> you know, personally, I was probably, and, and I'm still working on it, but that was, I was so bad about that. Right. Uh, just the, I'd set a goal for myself, I, you know, and I would even achieve the goal and then just be like, well, on to the next one. Keep, Cause you, you can take a break when this is done, you know, you can slow mm -hmm. down when this is done. And then I realized after probably took like three or four years of meeting my little goals each time. And I'm like, okay, wait, you're meeting your goals and you're not like giving yourself anything in the process. And I know if, 
you know, translating that to, you know, fitness has been a huge part of my life for such a long time. It's, I'm not going to say impossible, but it, it's not going to get cut out of the yeah, schedule. Maybe absolutely. it goes down a few times per week, uh, but you know, for other people who don't have it as routine, that's what I see go first. Most of the time uh, is yeah, you're right. they're like, you know, no, I, I'm going to skip today's workout, get more work done, achieve more. But it's like, well, if you're not, if you're not putting in that time for your health or, you know, to spend time with your family or whatever is important exactly. to you. Yeah. What if you did get hit by a bus tomorrow or something, you know, you, and that's you, it. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. I, I, I love that, Don. That's really awesome. But I do want to move to the quick fire questions of the show. So I'll ask you a quick question. Um, and you don't have to give a quick answer. Um, <laughs> uh, just, you know, I love to ask these questions to every guest to kind of get a, a consensus here. So the First question is the hardest workout you've ever done. Oh, two two stick out to me, but one most memorable has to be one of the one I think the first CrossFit workout I ever tried, which was GI Jane, and it was supposed to be a hundred one hundred burpee pull ups for time. And I remember I saw the video and was like, "What the hell is that?" Um, so I thought I would start. I would try fifty, and I was doing burpees, jumping pull ups, and then I remember about halfway through. I had a friend like come up and basically like lift up my body to help support me during the jumping pull-ups because I could no longer like get up over the pull-up bar. Um, so that one sticks in my mind for sure. And then another, one of my first track workouts in college, I was just, it was terrible. We were just running sprints. And I remember just going over to the side and throwing up and then being like, I don't think I can do anymore. <laughs> it was one of only very few times I actually threw up in a workout. Uh, so probably those two, those two come to mind. Wow, what uh what'd you run in uh college? Um, I ran four hundreds, one hundreds, four four by one. Um, mostly the sprints, the the anything under four hundred. You're fast. All right. Well, yeah. I <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was fast until I got out there with the track girls and was like, ah, after two years of that I was done. Yeah. Was, but uh, that, that's cool. I ran track in high school, but I wasn't uh wasn't good enough for the college guys. They were just like blowing me away. So I had to had to put a halt on it. <laughs> All right. So the next one, and I glad that I'm giving this question to you. Uh, so in your opinion, what's the best activity for building mental toughness? Um, whatever is challenging to you, you know, whatever is uncomfortable for you or new for you, those are the best things to build mental toughness. So whether that's something in, tra in your training or something in your life, um, that's new or challenging or slightly uncomfortable for you, continuing to do those things and continuing to seek those things and actually uh, intentionally go after them is the best thing to build ment mental toughness in my opinion. And do you think that it's something that should be practiced daily or more like a kind of like a gauntlet that people gauntlet approach yeah, I mean, or... there's definitely little things you can do each day to say oh, oh i kind of don't want to do that or that kind of might suck like, let me go ahead and try that you know there's there's small things we can do daily absolutely but then you know signing yourself up for something that's that's maybe that's physically challenging you know every every couple of months um that's that's a great way anything that's physically uncomfortable is a great chance for us to improve our mental strength all right if you could have one piece of equipment to train with for the rest of your life, what would it be? Uh, one piece, I would probably say like a 35 pound dumbbell or kettlebell, you know, just one piece of weighted, weighted something. I can take that, use that in many different ways. And I think I'd be good to go, especially living in Southern California. I don't have to worry about having too much. <laughs> oh yeah. You got lots of stuff to use out there. You yeah. could have just said Southern California and you uh, were... <laughs> yeah, my back, um, yeah, so so probably that. Probably oh. a Okay. A good All right, so this is the most important question of the show. Uh so what is your best advice you have for becoming a better human? 100% open-ended. Um I would just say find find something, find whatever it is that makes you come alive and and use that passion to help others. So, just combining whatever it is that makes you come alive and and using that to influence, help or encourage others. I love it. Given both of our professions, I completely agree with you 100%. All right. So, Don, uh, I really appreciate you being on this show, but I'm sure people after listening to you are going to want to check out everything that you're doing. So what's the best place for people to learn more about you and, and what you're doing? 
Thank you, Jared. Uh, the best way is to get on to mentalitywad.com and check out the website. Again, I have 500 plus free tips on there. Um, and then there's also programs for athletes and CrossFitters. There's a mental strength ebook that I wrote last year on there that, that helps people understand what is mental strength and how do I improve my own. Um, and, I, and again, I'm always coming out with new ways to develop programs or products to, to help people. But, um, if anyone is interested, they can always email me for coaching options, dawn at mentalitywad.com, and then connect with me on social media. Twitter, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram is mentalitywad. Okay, perfect. And I'll uh, link to all of those, including the website and social media accounts for everyone in the show notes of this episode. But other than that, Don, thank you so much for your time, and uh, thank you for all the great tips. Of course, and thank you for having me. always whine about their best. <laughs>